Hi guys, I'm Lee Chantel. I might start. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about 20 years of vegan. So I celebrated my 20th year of being vegan in January. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of a background and what I've learned over the years, all that sort of stuff. And because it's been intimate today, feel free to ask me questions while we go through. And um, so yeah, 20 years ago, I chose to be compassionate, chose to live my life in a different way, and um, that was veganism to me. So and from being vegan, it opened up a lot of new things. I learned about a lot of new things I didn't know before. And um, I hope that you can learn some new things as well. I might have like some other people in. Oh, I'm talking about 20 years ago. Do you want to learn something new? They look a bit scared to come in. This is two. Sorry. Two or two o'clock. Oh, Daniel got it wrong. That's okay. So, um, anyone here vegan? Are you guys vegan? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just for the day, I'm vegan. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I always loved animals when I was younger and um, just thought that was enough, I guess, and didn't um, really like too much meat when I was younger. My mum says I never really enjoyed eating meat. So, um, and we had a lot of dogs and cats over the years as well, and I didn't really understand too much of the difference or even the link between the different animals. Um, and one, one day we used to have a leg of lamb in um, Saturday nights for dinner with my family and it was called a leg, a lag, a lag of lamb so I knew it was from a lamb and um, that was when I first made that connection between what once was and um, what I was about to eat because I asked my mum what the particular type of meat that I liked, my sister and I liked and she said it was the Achilles tendon and I looked down and I've got one of those too. So that really freaked me out. I'd never really made that connection before. And um, it was just like a light, light lightning bolt or something that came to me when I was younger. And from that day, come on in. From, from that day, I never um, consumed red meat. And then um, that year, um, we went on a camp for school, it was a, a month camp where the city kids go to look after um, country animals and stuff um, in Australia, where I'm from. And um, we looked after chickens, and I couldn't eat any chickens after looking after them as well. And it was a gradual sort of transition for me, so it took me a couple of years from being vegetarian to vegan before making the commitment to become vegan. And um, I went vegetarian originally because I didn't want to kill any animals, I didn't want any animals to be killed for me, just for me to eat them. And then when I found out about the egg and the dairy industries and you know how they're just as horrific if not more than, than I'm just killing animals and I became vegan um, just, just after I finished school and um, I became yeah vegetarian because I didn't want to kill animals and um, became vegan because I didn't want any animals to be hurt, injured, abused, just for my own gain or other people's gain. And um, I got involved with a lot of groups, and many of you are involved with local groups around here, like to do volunteer work or help out. So that's what I'd, I'd suggest for people, just new vegans or want to get more involved. Um, just It's really good to have a community of like-minded people and meet, meet other people who think the same way as you and not all the time you know you've got to mix it up all your different friend groups of course because that would be boring but um yeah it's really good especially when you first become vegan to um, meet other like-minded people and 20 years ago there wasn't that many vegans so it's all um, on trends now so there's a lot more people that are vegan um but yeah 20 years ago it was like wow you're vegan you're awesome <laughs> and um and you'd go anywhere around the world, you meet different people, and I, I travel a lot, and um, you would know, just someone said, hey, I'm vegan, you'd be like, great, you you know, you felt, you felt like you were connected to them, and um, because back 20 years ago, if someone said they were vegan, that meant they cared about animals and animal rights, it was pretty much about animals then, 
um, nowadays a uh, few people may be a bit more confused about what the term, the term veganism means. A lot of people use it um, where they should maybe use plant-based diet instead. Um, so there's a lot of people that nowadays if someone says they're vegan, you're like, okay, what does that mean to you? Like, what, what is that? What does that mean? So, because a lot of people think that just means eating lots of fruit. So, or, um, you know, I don't know if, you, if you've seen, but a lot of people seem to be quite obsessed with fruit as a vegan. Do you have much raw food stuff over here? Yeah. Probably not the climate for it as much here, yeah, but uh, in, yeah, in Australia we've got a lot of raw, raw food and um, raw vegan people and a lot, a lot of fruit and they're encouraged to consume a lot of fruit. And you know, that's great, um, but there's a lot of other things that veganism means and not, not just in relation to food. And um, uh, when, um, when I first became vegan, there really wasn't much information around and that's why I got involved with these groups. And um, they sent information back then, they'd send you an envelope filled with um, printed out paper and you just scroll through the paper, maybe some pamphlets if you're lucky. I think you had a CD, I think we had CDs about 20 years ago. And um, you would learn some stuff and maybe pass it on to someone else. And it's so much easier now with, with um, the website and online and YouTube and everything. So, you know, everyone's got something in their pocket that they can go, oh, hey, have you seen this? And, you know, it's a visual or it's a podcast, it's audio. Have you just done that today? Have you? All the time. Oh, it's good it's awesome and it's really good for people to be able to see that there's so much stuff around and you know that that's the I think that's the biggest thing um, with any sort of change to happen is for people to see that it's normal for people to see it all the time and there's um, something I can't, I can't remember what the term is but they say if you change 10% of a population it's hard to get to that 10% but once you change that population at like 10%, then it just flows and just rolls like really, really easily. So where, you know, veganism, one to two percent of the population at the moment. Still a bit of work to go, but I think we're getting there. And I hope, you know, when we all work a bit better together that um, we get some, some other things done, some better things done. And um, yeah, I, I really liked um, joining other groups and I, I don't personally um, agree 100% with any group or even any person that I've met to be honest and um, that, there's nothing wrong with that you know and it's good to be able to have a discussion with people it's good to be able to say oh hey wh why don't you agree with that or um, what's your opinion on, on this and to be able to have a conversation and in a non-judgmental way with people and not using names and not calling people um, things that, terms that might upset people, um, you know, it's really good to be able to have those discussions with people because we want to be showing people that being vegan is easy, that you can do it, come in and join us. And um, you want to show that we're compassionate people because most people who are vegan are doing it because they're compassionate and sometimes we forget about this in relation to other people that we're dealing with, you know, because humans are animals too and we need to remember these sort of things and be a bit more nice to people, especially online. And um, one of the things that um, I always say to people is online you might be the only vegan that someone's come into contact with or even just in person. Um, someone seeing you, someone um, having a chat to you, you might be the only person they've met who's vegan. And if you treat them in a bad way, if you if you look at them and say, well, that's not vegan, you're not good enough, or you know, really disparaging to them about something, you could have lost someone, a potential vegan, you could have lost them for life. And I've heard so many people over the years who've said, oh yeah, I would have been vegan um, much much before if it wasn't for this guy, rah, rah, rah. And um, there's so much of that. So just be really mindful of just trying to promote positive aspects all the time of the movement and positive aspects of veganism and the lifestyle. Because there's heaps of positive things and sometimes we get caught up in all the negatives and try and promote that. And um, you know, that it's it's easier to promote positive things. If you look at even at marketing and um, 
social media, the things that get shared the most or the most interaction is from, you know, happy things. In particular, um, veganism, happy, you know, cute little cows or calves or chickens or things like that. People like seeing nice things. People don't like seeing a cow with its throat slit, do they? And um, there's definitely space for these things as well. Just, you know, don't, um, I know heaps of my friends who just post negative, negative, negative like full on all the time and um, a lot of their non-vegan friends aren't friends with them online anymore and they're like, I don't know where, where, why all my friends aren't vegan <laughs> or aren't friends with me anymore. I'm like, well, maybe you should mix up a, a few of the things that you're posting online. So just keep those things in mind and um, remember, I know, I know for me, um, being vegan or not, I don't want to see negative things all the time. I want to see positive things. What have we achieved? How's this got to this situation? This group's done some awesome work. And this person has inspired these people. That's the stuff I like to see. And um, if you do have to share um, images, like negative images or some upsetting stuff, I always like to follow it up with something like, this is what does happen to pigs, but when they're rescued, and here's an example of an animal um, shelter or animal sanctuary who's rescued these pigs, and look at the great life they're having now. You know, something like that, instead of just the negative aspects of things. And um, when, I, when I first became vegan, I um, was really interested in animals. So I cared about animals, I didn't want animals to die for me. Um, I believed that all animals had the right to um, live and not be killed, not be abused, not be cursed in any way. And um, when I learned about veganism and I started to learn other things, I guess when you're open to learning, you can learn heaps more more things as well. I find that when I study or other people that study as well, you're just open to learning. And um, over the years I learned more about different things. So then I became a bit more interested in nutrition and health and I studied naturopathy, nutrition, um, herbal medicine quite a few years ago and also was really interested in feminism and still am. And all these different things I found, found the link between them. And I started to learn about other things like social justice issues and food security issues, environmental issues. And I think our core values for all of these movements are very similar. We're working on the same sort of ideas that every, everyone or everything should be equal. You know, whether it's like um, having respect for the planet we live on, for other people, whether they work for us or wherever they live around the world, and even our animal friends, we should be respecting each part of these. And then, you know, it, it's hard to be mean or to use someone or something when um, you have respect for them. And so um, it's really good. I, I like to link those things all the time. And when I'm speaking to people, I like to find out what they're interested in. You know, there's so many people that um, care about, say, um, working out or um, gardening or, you know, things like that. So if someone, um, you know, I was speaking to someone and say, oh, yeah, um, I go to the gym all the time and eat my protein. And I'm like, well, you know, you get protein and everything. It just depends on how much exercise you're doing, what you want to achieve. And um, my latest book's on vegan athletes. So I said, well, I've got this book. I've interviewed over 100 vegan athletes from all over the world. And um, a lot of them are bodybuilders or like with the, some of them have really big muscles, the boys and the girls. So I'm like, don't think that they are lacking in protein at all. But I find it really um, hard to understand why people still think you need meat for protein. And some of these people are like, massive, like photos of them or if seeing them in person. I think you can tell that they're not deficient in protein just by looking at them. But people still think that they've still got that in their head, they need um, meat for protein. And um, yeah, and then if someone is asking, um, say about health, I'll tell them a few things about their health some um, new products they could try, some new foods they might not be aware of. Um, if someone's asking about gardening, someone's really interested in gardening, talk to them about organic gardening, things like that. If they're interested, if they love their animals, like there's a lot of people who love their pets and they just seem to shut off from the love for all animals with just the companion animals. So how do we get, how do we encourage them to bring that over to other animals as well? So 
I like to compare animals, you know, like if they love their dog and you're like, well, pigs are really more intelligent than dogs and they're very loyal and um, they're really great pets. And I love when you meet a pig on it. Has anyone been met a pig before or hung out with pigs? And you just rub their belly and they're standing up, you just rub their belly and keep rubbing and they just fall over on the ground. <laughs> it's the cutest thing. Um, so there's all these little things about animals that you can relate to other animals and you know help people learn and revere and have respect for these animals. And I also think, do you have many animal sanctuaries here? Or? You do? So an awesome thing to do, especially for kids, is to take them to an animal sanctuary, take them and mix the animals. Because I think once you've met an animal, for so many people, especially in, in city areas, um, don't meet animals. So if you haven't, if you can't work out, oh, that's a cow, then it dies, then it gets packaged, then I'm eating that. If you don't have any connection whatsoever with that sort of stuff, you're really not going to change any mindsets at all. So um, I really encourage people to encourage others to go to animal sanctuaries and to check out animals and make them. And um, and then I think nowadays it's really easy to be vegan, and um, we you know that's a really good thing. There's so many products we have now. There's so many businesses. There's so many food items. There's just there's lots and lots of things. It's something in Australia. Um, the amount of vegan products has gone up by something stupid like 80% in the past two years, which is massive. And I'm sure you know over here it'll be similar sort of thing. Um, and this is really really important because, like I was saying before, we want people to see oh veganism is easy. There's all these things you can use. Um, you know, 20 years ago. At the supermarket, we had soy milk, if you were lucky. There was one brand of um, ice cream that didn't last for very long. And it was so exciting if you went to a health food store and you got like dark chocolate. That was your excitement, you know. <laughs> and now, just looking around, some of the cakes that you have over here are massive too. There's like four or five different cake stores and they're like this big. So it's pr pretty impressive. Um, and so there's so many more products that you can buy and that's really great to encourage people to do these things, to um, eat these things as well. But also keep in mind the four basic staples of a vegan diet are fruit and veg, nuts and seeds, grains and um, beans, pulses and legumes. They're the things that you need in your diet to be able to have a healthy diet. So you don't need to be having all the fake cheeses and fake meats, all the donuts, stuff like that. So just remember that. I know it's hard. I know we all want it. Um, and I've still got that scarcity mentality from 20 years ago where you see a vegan cake and you're like, oh my god, I've never seen it. I haven't seen a vegan cake for six months. Need to have a piece of that, need to take some later, better take some for a friend. You know, still got that in my head, but there's vegan food everywhere now, so I don't have to worry as much. Um, so yeah, just when you're encouraging people to consume vegan products, just try and keep it the basic stuff, you know? And it's more affordable too for a lot of people. We, uh, I, I know your um, mock meats and stuff is a bit uh, cheaper than it is back home, um, but you can't, we want to remember to make veganism as inclusive, as popular as, as we can. Because if you're saying to someone, oh yeah, you need to buy um, fake meat, the fake cheese, the nutritional yeast, the quinoa, the chia seeds, this sort of stuff, which I love, quinoa and chia seeds are two of my favorite staples, but you don't need those things, and they can be very expensive, in particular for people that um, don't have disposable income or are a student or struggling or aren't working. So we want people, anyone, anywhere to be able to choose to become a vegan. And, and also on that note, um, we can all choose to be vegan and we all have lots of choices in the world, but some people have better choices than other people. So just keep this in mind in regards to when you're talking to someone or your activism. Because for some people, it might be really, really hard for them to be vegan to afford to eat certain, um, um, certain things and certain products. 
I know um, when I was in Troy in upstate New York in the States, um, I went to uh, the area Troy is um, a bit of a low socioeconomic area and um, there was no fruit and veg stores in the town like whatsoever, which I was shocked at as well. And um, there was no public transport. It was really hard to food would get in and out of that area. And the things, there was heaps of bottle shops, heaps of McDonald's and places like that as well. But the real food didn't exist there. So for people like that, and this was around um, like after the global financial crisis, so a lot of people were really struggling. So um, I just saw with my own eyes how hard it would be for certain people to be able to get some of the things I take for granted. So just remember, if you're in a city area, it's much easier, but for some people it's not. Like people in the country, you might be lucky if you go to a Chinese store, you can have you know, some uh, stir fry or some fried rice without egg. But so for some other people, it might be really hard. So keep these things in mind. Um, and um, yeah, I, I know um, a lot of chemists back home, they seem to sell a lot of vegan products. So I did a lot of um, traveling in Australia, or I do a lot of traveling in Australia. And recently, I was in the middle of nowhere and I would go to these places trying to find something to eat. And the chemists would always have food, which I thought was really bizarre. And um, so they obviously are making money from these products. That's why they're selling it, which is really cool. So there's always um, bizarre places that you'll find that you'll find vegan products that you just don't sort of think about. And um, one of the things I also think has changed in the past 20 years is a bit more of a push towards consumerism. And um, so, say 20 years ago, when you went to a vegan festival, there'd be lots of not-for-profits. There'd be so many not-for-profits, there'd be so many charity groups, and all the groups like sanctuaries and stuff like that. There'd be a few um, restaurants, because there just wasn't that many restaurants, there'd be maybe two if you were lucky, and a couple of people who had a few stores, but that, that was about it. And nowadays there seem to be a lot more um, people that are focused on buy my t-shirt because when you wear my t-shirt then you're a real vegan. You know, that's that sort of mentality. So um, I'm, I'm quite aware of that because I've seen how it sort of changes over the years. But you don't need to buy so-and-so's t-shirt with, with their branding on it or something. You know, you can still be vegan, you can still um, promote activism and promote positive things for that animals. And um, yeah, just try, if you're going to be spending money to something, try to give it to um, the animals or places that would really, um, the money can go further. And um, yeah, you want to definitely support vegan businesses. Um, and it's really great to have vegan businesses around. Um, but yeah, just remember, you don't have to be purchasing stuff to be a good vegan. And um, yeah, so keep that, that in mind. And so I also think, um, cool. Oh, sorry, I just remembered that that was so true. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, so with that aspect on more of the sort of consumerism aspects of veganism, I think a lot of people have lost the core values and the core ethics of the movement, which is about, you know, for me, it's about animals, animal rights, and trying to make the world a better place. And um, so we encourage you to learn um, these things if you're not aware of, to learn more about it and to promote these things a bit more rather than just um, sharing some, you know, food photos or things like that. And I know, I, you know, I come from a um, marketing background, so I know those things share, um, are spread very well. All you have to do nowadays is to share a um, picture of food or a photo of you half naked posing. Um, and that gets all the that gets all the likes and the shares. So that's very easy to get into that trap. It's very easy to um, get addicted to the likes and the comments from that sort of thing. But I encourage you to think beyond that and to share something else, whether it's quotes or um, sharing something that other someone else has done that's really cool. You know, um, someone that's inspired you or something inspiring. And um, I've noticed a lot of um, more health focus nowadays. So another issue um, seems to be a lot of young girls in particular come to veganism because it's a very restrictive diet and it's a, under the guise um, of some of their um, health 
or eating habits, like negative eating habits. So they're seeing veganism as really restrictive and it's an excuse to be able to control what they're eating and not eat that, oh no, I can't eat that, I'm not going to eat that, I'm not going to eat that. So just be really careful about those sort of things and be mindful, especially with young females when you're talking to them in regards to food. And veganism 20 years ago, if you weren't vegan, you probably would lose weight because there wasn't as many, um, all the great options we were talking about before. Nowadays, I don't think um, it's something you can say to people, go vegan to lose weight. Because unless you're eating the basics that we talked about before, there's so many other things that most people are going to eat that they probably, um, they might even put on the weight. So I know a lot of people who've become vegan put on weight and because they were told oh we're, we're going to lose weight from being vegan they're no longer vegan so to me that's not a really good way of promoting the lifestyle if you're going to get people um, feeling as though they're let down feeling they're not a good, good enough vegan if they haven't lost weight from it and just remember these things it's not about losing weight it's not about um, whatever food you're trying to control you know that's just one aspect of veganism and um, it's really important to learn from other groups and work out how to spread the movement more. And um, one of the groups I like to talk about is like the LGBTQI community. If you think about how they've promoted themselves or things that they agree with in, in the past and even now, you don't have to be lesbian or gay to, pr and to promote what they're trying to promote, to get involved with what they're getting involved with. Most people agree with a lot of their beliefs and are quite happy to share the things that they agree with. So um, I like to think about using other people as allies for the movement. So whether or not they're vegan, whether or not they're vegetarian, how can they help? And I know a lot of people who aren't vegan, um, but they share a lot of vegan things all the time and they're talking about vegan stuff. They're going out whenever they go out to eat. They're having vegan products, having plant-based products, showing their friends, oh yeah, this vegan stuff's pretty cool. They're really important to the movement and we don't want to be putting off people by saying, oh, well, you know, you can't come play with us because you're not vegan or you're not vegan enough or, you know, you're, oh, you're only vegetarian, not good enough. So just remember, everyone else is on their own path. Everyone's at a different place than you are or you have been and you just don't know where they are. And they need support, and they need compassion, and they need you to encourage wherever they are. And whether or not you agree with it, whether or not you think they should be doing better or something, try to support them at every every step of that. And then we can get some more people that are either, and I'm not talking about trying to change people to be vegan all the time. I'm more about planting seeds with people. So it's giving people the um, ability to, oh, I've learned something today. I'm going to take that home with me. I may or may not do something with it, but at least, you know, you're planting the seed in their head. And I've got a heap of people who um, I met 20 years ago, 10 years ago, who are now just starting to think about being vegetarian. So you never know what's going to happen. And most of us will never know how much, you know, we influence other people either. So yeah, just keep these sort of things in mind when you're when you're um, interacting with people. And um, also, when people ask questions, um, it seems like you get the same questions over and over and over. And um, you just sometimes you're just like, oh my god, I don't want to hear this question again. I've answered this one thousand times today. And um, but keep in mind that person doesn't know the answer to that question. Just because you know it, and you've said it a thousand times, um, they're still learning, and they still are asking questions because they want to know. And you want people to be asking questions. You want to encourage people to communicate and have a good conversation with people. And it's not trying to convince people, it's trying to find out, hey, what are your interests? Oh, that's similar to me. I like that. And finding out the things you have in common rather than the things that, um, you know, distract us all at the moment, you know, we need to focus more on those things that we have in common. And um, I just think 
that you need to remember that we need to be the best versions of ourselves and the best vegans that we can be, whether that's online or offline. Because like I said before, you might be the only person that someone has met who's vegan and you want to show a great, a great example of veganism in that way. I know um, one of my biggest tips um, from 20 years vegan that I tell people is um, uh, lead by example and be consistent. So I think I think that's pretty simple. So lead by example, be consistent, and um, just just start just start today doing that and start you know being a bit more kinder, being nicer, speaking better to people, and um, just do whatever you can to support other people. And I th I personally think that everyone's doing the best that they can in the best way that they. So um, that storm might be coming, something's brewing, I can feel it. And um, yeah, so just keep those things in mind. People are doing the best and the, le the last thing you want to do if someone's saying, oh, you know, I just, I stopped eating cheese or I stopped doing this, is like, oh, well, you know, why aren't you vegan yet? You know, like with a bit of attitude. You're like, wow, that's awesome. Have you heard about some other products you could do or did you know some other things? Um, and just try to encourage people to always be learning and know that they can come to you and say, hey, here's where I'm at, and that you'll give them support rather than you know push them away and make them think we're all very scary and they don't want to join our cult. And um, yeah, so just keep those sort of things in mind, and in particular online. I give a lot of talk talks about online etiquette and marketing yourself well and promoting veganism online. And that's one of the biggest issues that I see in the movement is how we're interacting, not just with non-vegans, but each other, because it's really, really mean. It's really horrible sometimes. So, you know, everyone's doing what they can, the best way they, they know how. And we need to be thinking about those the ways that we have those things in common rather than, oh, this person didn't do that, or that person didn't do that, or I don't agree with what they're doing because you can always learn from other groups and you can always learn from other people whether or not you agree with them 100 percent and um i like to call it my like learning toolbox so i've got all these things that i've learned or the books or people that i speak to and i put it all in my little toolbox and then whatever works for whatever situation i'll take it out you know and i, I like to think of things like that so um I'm, I'm, I've done a lot of travels and a lot of touring and I go around speaking about vegan stuff and I'm here for about three months. I've just been at um, Bristol um, last weekend at the festival there and I'm off to Brighton for next weekend and um, Bournemouth and, you know, that, is that your area? Yeah, <laughs> thought you got excited about that. <laughs> um, and Isle of Wight and maybe a few others in there as well, Liverpool. So yeah, it's been, been really good to be over here and here for a few, uh, well, just started, I'm here. this is my second week, I think, out of three months and 10 days. So it's good so far and keep up the good weather. And um, <laughs> well, you brought yeah. it with yeah. you, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought the sun, there you go. <laughs> um, and maybe we'll just get a bit of a thunderstorm this afternoon. Eh? But did anyone have any questions that they wanted to? Yep. Yes. So basically, because I'm just starting already, I'm a new one. Yeah. Um, so basically, the challenge would well, obviously there are always solutions, but when you go to a holiday, like a proper holiday, mm -hmm. obviously you know you can't organise the things like you, know, you can go to your hometown or somewhere. It's easy to find a shop and yeah. you can go and buy the products. But when you go a proper holiday. How do you cope with that? Yeah, well, I always, because I travel a lot, and yeah, I it, yeah. um, always look, do you know Happy Cow, the website? Happycow.com, check that okay. out. So it tells all the shops, you can get an app actually, so you can get an app. So, um, like, I was out seeing some bands last night thinking, where am I going to eat? And you can just go and um, have a look at the app, and it'll tell you where all the vegan, vegetarian, um, places are around where you are based on your GPS coordinates but there's also a website and that's been going for many years one of my friends from LA um, has it and you, I normally when I know where I'm going to stay or that area I look on happy cow for the vegan 
restaurants around and I would book somewhere to stay based on if I can walk to it from where I'm staying. <laughs> so that's my that's what I do. Or even nowadays I guess you know you can Uber to places quite quickly or, or taxi or something. And especially in Asia, you know, um, it's really cheap to get around. So okay. that's that's what I would do. Um, and even you know, there's things like Airbnb that have vegan Airbnbs. So if you go somewhere and there's an Airbnb, I would suggest trying to find a vegan one in that area and then they can make food for you most of the time or they'll know somewhere to go. And um, yeah, I think Happy Cow would be the best to start because it'll list so many places too. So maybe you might not be walking distance from it, but you'll be able to see, oh, that they've got 10 restaurants in that suburb but in that one they've only got one and it's only open monday to friday so i'm going to be there on the weekend so i'll go to that that area so that's what that's what i would do and then also um just ask people like if you're going somewhere um get to know either the vegan group in that area or um the animal rights or whatever groups there or meetups the meetups there's a lot of vegan meetups in some areas and just see where people go where they have their events that sort of stuff um, and it's yeah it's hard when you go some places and you can't speak the language like it's a bit easy for me over here because you guys well have been to many places in Europe yet but you know most people can understand what I'm saying so sometimes um, in Asia it's been quite hard to be able to um, work out what you can and can't eat um, so yeah just keep the language in mind sometimes wherever you are so just know what how to say vegan or vegetarian maybe if you're going somewhere that doesn't speak English and um, in um, I think it was Thailand there's this um, it's very hard to read things because it's all in the um, yeah. the Thai um, what you call it, like script and there's a little there's a sign that looks uh, that looks like a seven that means vegetarian so be looking out for the sevens with the seven mm -hmm. you know when you're walking around. So just yeah, yeah, think about tips and things like that. Did that help? Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Any other feedback? Um, there's a lack of I think in the veganism movement there's a lack of different minorities being meat communities. There is variety of there's very much meat culture. Meat culture? Yeah. Uh, different religions that you know, different religions that just seem to consume. Yeah. And also you were talking about the prices as well. Yeah. I do find some vegan products there, but there are actually, there are co-ops that people actually buy in bulk, yeah. which is good if you're looking to and you can buy in bulk, and then you can yeah. share the products that is much cheaper. Yeah, that's what I do too, like the Chinese places, the, yeah. um, Indian places yeah. like the supermarkets, they've got like heaps of like lentils or, or flowers and that. You can just buy them in bulk. And yeah, you could, you know, with some friends or we'll buy yeah. some stuff and share it. That's yeah, an awesome idea. Yeah. Um, but in regards to like religions and them eating milk or uh, it, eating animals, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I still don't know the answer to that. That's a hard one. I don't know if you, you know, even um, if. If someone doesn't want to talk to you about something, if they've already made up their mind, you can tell. And there's a, there's this quote that I love um, that's saying there's three different types of people. There's the people who get it, there's the people who get it when they're shown, and there's the people who never get it. So if you focus on the first two, like the person that if you have a chat to, they'll be like, oh yeah, cool, I'm, you know, I agree with what they're saying, you know, you might have a few questions, but they're okay about it. Or the people that, you know, have already vegan or vegetarian. <laughs> but those other people, I honestly wouldn't even waste your breath because it's just, it, it's really not going to go anywhere. And you'll know, I'm sure a lot of you would know, just talking with people, whether or not you're getting anything positive or negative back, or you're getting all these blocks. So if you're getting that sort of thing from people, I just, you know, just, um, maybe just agree to disagree and if you're especially if you're friends or family with those sort of people and um, I've had to do that with some of my friends because I value their friendship and I want them in my life 
we've had to agree to disagree, not with just vegan stuff, but you know, a friend, one of my best mates who's in the army, for example, and um, you know, just had to agree to disagree on things, and we can be friends. So um, I'm not sure. Like, I'm sure it would be hard if you're in an area that's just dominated by that sort of mindset. So. Um, just uh, that would be another reason to make sure you're around like-minded people and get to know other people in that area, and that can, you know, you can bounce things off each other and you don't feel as though you're so removed or, you know. Does that help? Okay. Anything else? Any questions? You just walked in. Did you have anything you wanted to add or ask? You missed all the good stuff, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, much easier now. But yeah, I think thanks, thanks guys. I think we'll wrap it up now. But um, yeah, I'll put I'll put the video on YouTube on my Google Vegan YouTube and yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. The website. So my website, VivaLaVegan.net. So that's been going since 2005, and there's lots of information on that as well. Interviews, recipes, how-to videos. Oh, my books, um, and yeah, um, my name is Lee Chantel, Lee Chantel, and you can find my other website, LeeChantel.com, and I'm um, across all social media channels for Lee Chantel and Viva La Vegan, so follow my travels as I'm over your side of the world as well, L-E-I-G-H, yeah, with a hyphen, Chantel. Mm -hmm. well, I was just say one other question. Yep. Book. My book, yeah. I just found it interesting that you saw a range of athletes. Yeah, I had, so the, the full talk is top tips from vegan athletes, fitness fanatics, and exercise enthusiasts. So it's um, different modalities from all over the world. So we had some people that are, uh, you know, really like yoga instructors. We had, oh, there was a lot of um, ultra endurance people, so a lot of runners and stuff like that. There's a lot of bodybuilders. Um, yeah, just a variety. Um, some a skater, a guy, a, I had a couple of race car drivers, a guy and a girl. They're both awesome actually. Um, yeah, just random. It's quite random to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's. Um, I know the Vegan Society UK has that, but not here. And Animal Aid as well on their websites over here, and you can buy it from like Book Depository and all the other places like that as well. And yeah, it's um 430 pages, and yeah, 111 athletes, and they all get asked the same questions. So. Um, like what food they eat, um, what, or why they went vegan, um, how they how they promote veganism in their day to day life, what questions they always get asked about, and to me it was like sh I thought it was really shocking. Seventy four or something percent of the athletes still get asked about protein, uh, and I just can't understand that. So because they're massive, some of these people are massive guys and girls with these bulging muscles, and people still asking them about protein. So mm, still got a bit of work to do. Um, one like for me, like protein seems like this like huge like trend that everyone's like protein, protein. So like having been yes. vegan for twenty years, yeah. Presumably you didn't get those questions. Like, has, have you seen an increase in how often people? Um, I you always ask. got asked that question. You okay. get protein, calcium, iron all the time. But I think it's because anything about calcium or iron. Oh really? People now, okay. like, yeah. And B12, like protein. Yeah. But I think that's because of the um, what's that um exercise thing everyone's into? I can't remember what it's called. You know, they're really, it's a, um, oh, I can't remember what the name is, but it's really intense CrossFit. work. Yeah, CrossFit. That, I blame most of it on CrossFit, to be honest, and the paleo thing. So when paleo and CrossFit, they're very entwined, when that all happens, which I don't know how, how popular it is over here, but it's very popular back home. Um, and so a lot of people were saying, oh, we have to be paleo, or we have to eat this way, and you need much more protein, and you know, a lot of people 
we're having more animal protein as well because that was clean and it's clean eating <laughs> so um, yeah but I think that will die off a bit I've seen that like, there's quite a few paleo we had a massive influx of paleo cafes and, yeah, yeah. and the like and I noticed a lot of them back home have been closed or they're not yeah. as popular like they, they were very popular there for a while yeah, so, so gross. I don't know how to I don't, I really don't know what this is, how to help that, like, like, you're like, you're like people are seeing lots of vegan yeah, athletes so that look fit and look healthy and are fun? lifting, yeah. you know, massive, massive weights or winning all these competitions, you know, I think we just need more and more of those people and more of them to say, hey, I won that and I'm a vegan, maybe, so, yeah, and I think that'll happen. Yeah. 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 What do you build? Yes, protein. Build muscle. But all the energy and everything. Yeah, so the carbohydrates. Yeah. So really, what it is, you really need so much protein. Yeah. You know, if you don't exercise hard, yeah. really. So, and even that, you know, the protein, what you don't use, you know, then it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just a waste, really. So. But it definitely did, like, maybe five years ago, or even a bit, even a bit less than that. Yeah. So, yeah, all the blames on them. Very and yeah, probably the dairy industry is commissioning yeah. studies on protein. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the dairy industry also, they're you know, doing lots of studies um, about, um, you know, we're all going to die before we're 30. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I've been doing 20 years, still yeah. living. <laughs> yeah, so when, uh, just 17 or 16. Yeah, so I'm 37 now, so. And it's much easier now. My parents thought it was a phase that I would grow out of. And um, haven't. I haven't grown out of that phase. <laughs> so um, they, and my mum, I remember she said, oh, I'm not cooking anything for you. You're not getting anything special. So I had to learn how to cook. And yeah, and I learned how to cook. And I was a very bad cook when I was at school. Um, and I, we just have to learn. And so I did, and I think that's what's awesome about being vegan too. You learn all these new things. Like, I never knew quinoa or amaranth or chia seeds or even like all the different veggies. Like, because we're so close to Asia, like okra and kale, kale's not really Asian, but you know, lots of different Asian products that are awesome. And you know, it just, it makes you realize there's so much more and so many other options you can eat rather than just you know, a slab, yeah, a slab of animal flesh with some veggies for garnish, and you just take that off, and you're like, oh, uh, veggies, that's all I've got. So yeah, I had to learn how to eat because I didn't, I didn't know about to food when I was 16. You know? um, so you had to learn about beans and stuff. So yeah, it was good, good education, I think. Yeah, but um, we might wrap that up, guys. Thanks for the interaction and comment on that.